Welcome to The Downside. Hi. My name is Jamarco Cerezi. Mm. I'm here with my co-host, Russell Daniels. Hi, Jamarco. <clears throat> how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Great. Try to clear the throat before we start the whole Sorry. thing. We're here <laughs> with, with a, 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 a guest. But listen, this is uh, we're recording this <laughs> we're all out of order. <laughs> But I wanted yeah. to, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to get a writer on. Yes. When we talk about the writer's strike. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Russell is pro big corporations. Oh, yep. Russell yep. is big that pro. Is me. Uh, but we're here with our guest, writer, comedian, uh, Twitter personality, Mike Drucker. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. This is my voice. If you hear it, hi. <laughs> And you with the strike, this is the first time you've worked 10 weeks just coming here today. <laughs> so thanks. I'm sure it was tough yeah. getting out of bed. It was tough getting out of bed. I apologize. Uh, when we were supposed to originally record this, I have not recorded an in-person podcast in like two years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I was like, I set up my microphone. I set up like, because I do a little setup at my desk when it's time to record a podcast and I got everything ready and I got quick time open. And then I read the email. And I was like, I'm a it, I'm, I'm allowed to swear, I'm sure. Yeah. But yes, I'm a yes, fucking yes. idiot. <laughs> yes. Like, I totally did not know it was in person. Well, you you rescheduled the week after, and that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I apologize. Yes. Hey, yes. We got work done. We got work done that day. We did. We recorded, speaking we of, we recorded of it. Uh, an extra episode that will come For out eventually Patreon. on the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. Glad we got to that. I'm wearing a new vintage Little Shop of Horrors shirt. This is from New York. Some random high school. What is it? Virginia Theater. Who gave that to you? My sister got this for me. She gets you all oh, your shirts. Oh, that's nice. She gets me. I said, I want vintage uh, theater yeah. shirts. And this one is a... So listen, at home, if you have theater shirts that don't suck and they're large, send them. Write me. And then I'll send the address. <laughs> let, me, let me verify. I'm not just going to give out the address willy-nilly to all yeah. five of you out there. Um, uh, before we get into the writer's strike, uh, uh, I wanted to complain about... Because this is the downside... About I went to my brother's graduation uh -huh. uh, yesterday, and uh, it's Where? Uh, Boston College. Okay, which I learned in the graduation. I said a lot of Jesus because uh, uh, we're Jewish, and that's when I found it. It was a Je Jesuit, mm. Jesuit, 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 Jesuit. Jesuit. Yeah, I can't even say it. My tongue starts yeah. burning, and. Uh, one of the most boring ceremonies I've ever been to in my entire fucking life. I mean, there's not life. like a fun but college why? graduation. Why are graduations so utterly, utterly awful? There's no, there's not a, I was excited yeah. because the day before yeah. at BU, yeah. Boston University, the head of Warner Brothers spoke yeah. and he was booed. Yeah. yeah. And everyone chanted, pay your writers. And so when I saw that this graduation had an ambassador from the Ukraine, I was like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry you what had to go of, through that. <laughs> what kind of chant are you going to do? You know. Yeah. It would have been fun if we did a pay your writers too. Yeah. How long are we talking? Oh, well, it was two graduations. So first was the big one. What? Why did Wait you go to two? both? What, what, because your because was in my both? brother was there. My brother, he was in like the uh, he was in the 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 whole school. Yeah. And then thank God they don't do the names for the whole school. They they break it off into majors essentially. Yeah. Okay. And I just don't look. You may, okay, you have to do Jesus. You have to read Latin. But 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 someone must sing. In, in the graduating class, have them sing a song. We're on a football field. Get the cheerleaders out here. You want to <laughs> do you all want the it names. longer. You want it more. Yeah, they would take more time. Every name. Yeah. I want to watch them just by the end, just, just deteriorating. <laughs> I want a, a flip for each name. And I just don't understand. I get it's not going to be a Broadway show, but I feel like there's been this <laughs> resignation of we're going to make this painful. Everyone's going to stay because they have to. Yeah. For this one moment, they cheer for their kid. Yeah. And I don't know why they have to be so bad. And I don't like how they honor some of the students like extra. Yeah. Like, yeah. like this yeah. is the day. Just let everyone be an equal. Yeah. Some today. of them have extra cloaks and things. Little don't cords they? and Little medals. Yeah. And, yeah. Things, and they yeah. honor them. And they and say like, their you name. sit in front, you know, like kind of like, yeah. I don't know. And they, they had one kid, they said, uh, you know, he graduated with a 3.9 while pursuing cancer research. And I was like, just give him the 4.0 then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just give him the 4.0. Yeah. Just, just it, it's it's all, especially because it was Jes Jes Jesuit. Yeah. It smacked of like propaganda for college, propaganda for America, and propaganda for Jesus without any of the entertainment that comes along with it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what Jesuit. That's that. That pretty nails Jesuit. What is Jesuit? Yeah. I don't. It is a I've heard of it, but I don't know what it means. Um, essentially think, uh, and I'm going to get this wrong and someone's going to write a very angry email to you. We have um, zero Christian listeners. <laughs> um, it is essentially like, a sort of a monastic type group. And they're, think like monks, but they're kind of like a little more focused on education. They're a little bit older. They're more like established. You've heard of like Franciscan monks. Uh Jesuit monks, I think, are another branch, sort of like Mm. a different type of monk. But they often run uh, educational institutions. Yeah. I just wish, as maybe uh, it's a spice of the graduation, you put a gun to everyone's head and said, do you believe that in the resurrection? Because part of me is like, how many people here how how many of us are buying this anymore? Right. Yeah. What are the numbers? Because because I imagine there's it's it's never been everybody, but I just feel like <laughs> I feel like it's like three people now. Yeah. In a stadium full of people. Yeah. It's yeah. it's like it's not even the priest saying the words. And I just I think when I realized how Jesuit it was was when they did the cross. And right. It was like the wave. Like it was so big to see a thousand people do it at once. And it's not like the yeah. professors are all Jesuits, right? No. 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 But it's Boston, which I feel like is a heavy Catholic area. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was uh it was it was awful. You have any fun? You got you got drunk I saw on your Instagram. I got drunk the night before, had a great dinner with the mom. Uh-huh. Uh <laughs> uh and, and my siblings Katie booked a part on the voice. She's on the voice tonight. Oh my god. So she's dancing. But so it's good to see my mom, but but just I just don't know who it's fun for. Like it's fun for the families. The only moving part, two two parts. One, when they they applauded the people who were the first in their family to go to college, that felt that felt special. Sure. Even though they just entered a different scam, mm. you know. And then the Ukrainian. She, they, this was the only joke. The only joke was the Ukrainian woman said. She was there to talk about love. Ugh. And she said, uh, not the love necessarily romantic, like flowers and chocolates, although as a married woman, let me tell you, doesn't hurt. That's the only joke. <laughs> How old was she? I appreciate it in a way. Unless she was like 23. No, no, no. <laughs> she, she was a 23-year-old ambassador for right. Ukraine. No, but I mean, just like, she was like know. as a married lady, <laughs> sure. the old husband. Yeah. No, it, it, it was like someone who, it felt right that she made that joke. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It felt right. It felt like her husband had not brought her flowers for a long, long time. Yeah, okay. It might be hard in Ukraine. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure they use that as, as an excuse. I'm sure she's like, oh, you couldn't get any flowers? <laughs> well, you, oh, you're out on the battlefield? Uh, they call it a battlefield for a reason. There's flowers. You could pick some. So just awful. <laughs> uh, and did you go to your, you have a younger sister? I have a younger brother. Younger brother. Did you go to his graduation? Um, I did not go to either his college or his business school graduation. Um, just be, both times I had a job that did not give time off. Mm. Like if you, if you took time off, they would fire you kind of. Really? Yes. Yeah. What job? Uh, it, uh, it was a showbiz job. <laughs> oh, <Whoa. laughs> Which I won't get into deeper. Ruthless. Um, Because I still have friends there. But uh, it wasn't like they're like, if you go, we'll fire you. It was just like, no. No, no. no. You you cannot go to... My brother went to business school in England. So I could not go to England in the middle of a week, of a work week. Yeah. it's It seems less important to do... I don't know. I think I went to my brother's high school graduation. Definitely not his college graduation. By the way, high school... I didn't even go to my own. Like, I didn't even go to my own... When I got my... Graduate degree. I did not go to that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Not doing that. High school graduation for I went to my brothers. Yeah, that was fun. It's shorter. They had chorus. Yeah. Yeah. They had like people. They 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 showed their talents even if they weren't good. And right. It was fun to watch. Yeah. It was fun to watch some bad. I'd rather see like the worst chorus in the world. Yeah. Than a, then, a good chorus. Oh, Unless it's the Mormon Tabernacle. I don't. I'd rather see like. Yeah. Boys. Who are the worst? It's the worst thing you've ever seen. <laughs> That's fun. You want yeah. you want to see other people not have fun. Yes. That would be fun. Yes. For you. Yeah. <laughs> At um, my college graduation, I forgot who, but they had some like I guess famous trumpet player. Um, fun. Whose name? It was fun at first, but it went on about ten minutes. Oh. And around like there was like three minutes, and I was like, "This is amazing." And about five minutes, and I was like, "Wait, this trumpet, is going trumpet alone." Trumpet alone. Like his whole thing no. was like, like a- we've invited this musician. Yeah. Sometimes you need other things, with right? Certain instruments, but like, it was like his his like almost speech was him playing trumpet for ten oh. minutes. Like that was his message. 
Yeah, that's a long. Speech. And you know what? The other thing with the Ukraine, the Ukrainian ambassador was she just kept talking about like democracy, the importance of democracy. And there I am in Boston. Yeah, very conservative Boston, with with, and I'm I'm just there was a degree of like. No one here believes in the same definition of this word that we're all talking about right now. It yeah. just, it's just weird. There's nothing wrong. You got to do propaganda sometimes. Yeah. But why at the college thing? This is their day. Yeah. Ukraine can wait. Take a day off, Ukraine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a you strong opinion on it. Uh, yeah, I, I, no, it's just a weird speaker. You want a fun speaker? This is this is the this is supposed to be. They fun. probably tried to get a fun speaker. Yeah, that's that. I'm yeah. sure they asked for big. You know, funny, funny people. It's the same thing with having the Time Warner guy, though. It's like, why yeah. are you bringing this this overly rich billionaire to the thing? Yeah. yeah. What, what, yeah. what does he have to tell these kids? For him, these kids are just like, you know, cheap workhorses for him. Yeah. yeah He's yeah. looking at unpaid interns in front of him. Yeah. Why yeah. have him speak? Yeah. <laughs> Dream speaker. Dream speaker. For me? For graduation. Oh, I don't know. Probably a comedian because you're like, you just want it to be funny you yeah, and be funny. you want it to be quick and you don't want to like, you don't want to leave. I don't actually want to leave feeling like inspired that much. You're like, you're done with something. Your head's not, when you're graduating, your head's not like, I don't know. You're like, yeah. let me finish this thing yeah. and not like be challenged to look like towards my whole future quite yet. Sure. So you want it to be funny and quick. That's my, uh, that'd be my only kind of Maria thing. Bamford did one year and I think it's online where I believe it was about how she was asked, she, her speech was about how she was asked to do said speech for free and how she's like, no, pay me. And it was about like the negotiations to get money. Oh, and then she donated the money anyway. But she for a while was on a real kick about like, I'm going to talk about the finances of show business. Yeah. And it looking back, and it was like weird. I'm sure some of the parents were like, uh, "What right. they couldn't get the Ukrainian ambassador, <laughs> right?" But for me, I was, as like a younger person, I'm like, "This is interesting. Yeah, yeah. this is interesting." Yeah. But you get to a point, you hit on a point, which is a lot of the time the graduations for, and I don't mean this in an emotional way for the parents in terms of like, we got someone that an old person will like. Yeah. We got someone that your dad's gonna love. Yeah. Um, almost, I, I don't think that's the entire point of it, but part of me thinks sometimes they cater to the parents more than the students. Yeah. Cause they're, yeah. they're like, they want to feel like the money that they spend exactly is worth it. Look at this brilliant billionaire who like, like our speaker who, is Dick Gregory. You're excited <laughs> to be your kid. Do you know what I mean? Like there is yeah. a thing where they want to, they, that's what will impress people. They think, you yes. know, I, yeah. Like if you're, if you're like a 65 year old college Dean, you think what's impressive to you is what would impress a 65 year old dad. Yes. Yeah. And I guess they do deserve it given how much money they just spent. Right. Or, yeah. Or put on their kids in a loan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, JoJo, my brother JoJo, I know you don't listen to this podcast, but my sister Katie does. Katie, tell JoJo that I, I love him and I'm proud of him. Is your is and his real name JoJo? Why would you say it like that with that disgust in your no, voice? Uh, his uh, name's Joseph. I call him JoJo as okay, a term you, of affection. I You've never affectionately <laughs> called him that name in front of me before. That's why I recognize the name Joseph, but I, I never heard you <laughs> call. I didn't know you had a brother named Jojo. So funny, because his name, I think his name's technically William Joseph. And the you number think? of the number of William Josephs at this very white Boston college yeah. was insane. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, just because every time I thought like, oh my God, they skipped it to him. I'm going to miss the, the thing. Yeah. Um, so Jojo, I'm proud of you. Don't ever make me go to a graduation ever again. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. If this is your first time listening to The Downside, this is a place where we let negativity flow. We don't pretend things are getting better. They're getting worse for all of us. And we might as well enjoy it while it's happening. Uh, uh, real quick again, if you, if you want extra episodes or access to our live episodes, my clean comedy special, The Rats Are In Me, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. And we have another live taping, June 5th, 7.30 p.m. New York City. We will be taping with Molly Carney from Saturday Night Live. Uh, ticket link in the description of the show. I, I got to tell you, we, we have... I feel like we have a good amount of listeners, but the live shows, I worry that our They're listeners are the kind the of people who don't leave the house. Yeah. So guys, buckle up. But then we take had a, a full deep show in Houston. It's an interesting thing. Yeah. It's an, it, come, in, come in New York. June 5th, New York, 7.30 PM. It's going to be really great. The live ones always are. And yeah. from Saturday Night Live. Yeah. 
Uh, I, but we're here. We, we it was the garbage people in the pre-recorded ones. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. We we want to get this one out soon because because it looks like the strike could be over any second, now. any moment Seems now. So close, yeah. any Everyone's moment. In such good spirits, um, Mike. I know you. I know you a lot through Twitter. Yep. You've written for fucking everything. I uh, uh, and and what was the, what was the thing? Did you leave any job for this strike? Were you on a job? Um, I was briefly going back to Tonight Show, um, just because oh. I kind of knew there was a strike coming, so it felt like a good time to get a job beforehand, so I could like kick back my union insurance, and you know, I was bored because I wasn't writing for a couple months. Um, so at the moment, I was at I was at Tonight Show and had to leave that for the strike. So I I really want to get into the weeds of of being a writer, what the strike's about. And uh, uh, why things have gotten so bad? I'm I'm very pro yeah. strike. Yeah. Even if I didn't have a lot of knowledge about it, I have a degree. But I'm pro SAG striking. Yeah. I yeah. had yeah, some yeah, awful, me too. Me too. awful payouts from a show I did called Bonding. I filmed it for a French streamer called Black Pill. It's technically I was in three episodes. Yeah. Hundred fifty dollars a day for two days. Yeah. Then Netflix bought it. It was on their marquee, yeah. and I did not get any change in money uh, from the $150 a day for fucking Netflix. Yeah. Uh, and and I just remember uh, with, with acting, as everything went digital, online stuff never paid quite enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, yes, so I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm very excited for there to be a strike. Yes. Tell me about what was your first writing job? Um, well, uh, I, like... In college, I majored in English and journalism, so I started to freelance a little bit jour- like for like video game publications in co- college. So I would uh-huh. say like I got like a few like things published in like literally like FHM magazine, Maxim magazine because they were they would spend a lot of money on video game stuff. I didn't even write about hot people. What's a lot of money for a video game columnist? Um, when you're in college, two hundred fifty bucks. Wow, yeah, that is a lot. Of money. Like, uh, especially co- like I w- it was 2003, 2004 when I was in college, when I was like starting to write in college. And so, you know, back then, 250 is a good chunk of change. What would you say that is now? I always have a really bad calculator of like when someone's like, I used to make a buck 50 in right. the 30s. I'm like, mm-hmm. I have no idea. Is I feel like good? it's like three, 320 or 350 now. It's not like an insanely different amount, but it's still like for a college student. What what are these headlines? Is is like what's, the, what's uh, I covered? A, I don't remember what the headlines are, but I covered a Halo tournament. I covered uh, like a bar that which now is everywhere, but back then was like a new thing. A bar that was like dedicated to games. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I interviewed a couple video game people. Sort of, I mean, kind of like you're in college in journalism school, getting whatever you can type jobs. Yeah, I was just lucky enough to do it in something I was interested in. But this is when video game journal. I feel like video game journalism got. Harder it as did. gamer, like it got it got more tied to society and societal values. I don't yeah. think people were necessarily talking about like the role of gender in Nintendo Power in the nineties. No, which is the magazine I used to read. No, but a lot oh. of what you're thinking of was also like ten years after I was doing that. Like Gamergate was around like 2013, 14. So this was still like kind of in the you know uh, you could say hobbyist media type. Okay, era. cool. Yeah. Uh, so you're digging it. Yeah. You like video games. Russell's not a video game guy. No. That's okay. I gave up before college. Not, you don't have to. I, I yeah. love, I, I always watch it from afar yeah. with a weird, like, I gave it up because I don't see how I could be a functional human being. Right. And indulge in this. Yes, that's it's fair. It's so much fun. Yes. Much more fun than anything interpersonal with human beings. Yeah. No, that's why I'm, that's why I'm there for it. Yeah. That's why I like it. And so then what, what was the transition from that into like comedy writing um i just i don't know i uh for some reason i got a bug in my head that i wanted to try comedy in college and i went to co- i went to nyu i went for english and journalism but i was in new york city and the advantage to going to college in new york city is if you want to try to do comedy there's a thousand open mics mm. that are you know i've done open mics when i visited my folks in florida i've done you know open mics with you know when i visited other friends in different college like my girlfriend at the time when she was living in pennsylvania and Open mics at a small town or a small college are very different than like just New York City open mics. So I was yeah. lucky to jump into a big pool and learn how to swim in a relatively big pool. There's still open mics, but I had a nice advantage that I was in New York. I could go to the cellar if I wanted to and just watch a show yeah. without it being like my tourist trip of the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. you know what I mean? Like I sure. could, 
or I could hit an open mic, hit another open mic, then go to a friend show. Like it really allowed me to start doing comedy, not well, but at least fast. Like I could do a lot of it fast. Yes. Yeah. Were you, were you good out the gate? No, back? I was so bad. I was so abysmally bad. Um, I'm still not, I wouldn't say amazing. I think I'm a better writer than a comedian. Um, I'm a good one if you're booking it. If you're book, if you're listening to yeah. this and booking a show, I'm amazing. Um, out the gate, I was just, I was, I'm, I'm a naturally nervous person, and I actually have a genetic, uh, sh like shaking. I shake naturally. Mm. What is it called? Um, essential tremor. Essential tremor. Essential. It's called an essential tremor. An essential tremor. And yeah. when were you diagnosed with this? Uh, it was actually after this point. Uh, it was in my late maybe mid or late twenties, just because like I starting to notice it and like be annoyed by it. And so I went to a doctor and they were like, Oh, it's just a tremor. And it's not related. Cause when it's, I get nervous, yeah. I, and thank God this went away, but I was always terrified in comedy. Whereas once in a while I would get the shakes if I was holding a, a mic like this and I would have to hold my mic like this. People would think it was a choice, but it was because I was nervous and see, something would happen. See, and for me, it's, I'm sorry. I'm, I just moved the mic no, from no, my face like a fucking idiot. Um, uh, it's not, it's not that I'm nervous so much. It's that almost if I'm paying attention to it, it'll start to do that. Th mm. This hand is, this hand is worse than this hand, but it'll still happen. Um, I tend to like lean on, like not lean on the mic stand, but keep it in the mic stand and just do this yeah. because even when I'm not nervous, I'm still shaking a little bit and it can make the audience think I'm nervous. And that like, of course, that makes creates like nervous. a feed, almost yeah. a feedback loop. Everyone's where getting nervous. Unless exactly. you're on full Joe Para and you're like, this is yes. fully what I am. Yes. Right. Which is not my bit. Um, my bit's how cool. No, um, <laughs> I, uh, no, but like people like, cause I'd have like friends who'd see me, they'd be like, you were so nervous up there. And I'm like, I don't, I wasn't. Yeah. And it's yeah. frustrating. But at, also, what a weird thing to say to your friend after a show. Even if yeah, you right? But, <laughs> but you friends are terrible. So nervous yeah. up there. You looked nervous. That's the main thing I took I, away from I that have had that set. more than once from like, a co like you know, back when I had non comp, back when I had non comedy jobs, um, back <laughs> when I was a normal human being before I was amongst the gods, <laughs> I um, people would come to shows and they'd, they would be very open on. They'd be like, you were so great. You seem nervous yeah. and like you were shy. And it's like, so you didn't have a good time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wasn't very good at it for a long time. And I think I just kept at it. And because I was in New York, I was able to do it so much that I built up the muscle a little bit. Yeah. And even though I was bad at it, it was one of the first non-academic things I had done that I felt good doing. Like, sure. I think if I had not gone into comedy, there's not a small chance I would have stayed in academia. I got my master's in English lit. I really, you know, thought about getting a PhD and just sticking around. Um, but I don't know. I fell in love with comedy. And when you started doing that, were you like, oh, I see a path as a stand up comedian? Or did you, wh when did you go, oh, a writer? I could be a writer and I could have a, a whole career. Um, well, again, like I had been writing before I had started comedy. So I already knew that, like, at the very least, I could make some money doing it. It yeah. wasn't like mercenary to the sense where this is going to be my, this is going to be my living. This is all I'm going to ever do. But I was like, I can do this. And luckily, the two sort of came together because while doing stand up, I met Megan Gantz, who, you know, later on went on to executive produce Modern Family, but she was at The Onion at the time. And she was like, hey, do you wanna, you were really funny. Would you like to apply to be a freelancer? And I was like, of course. And so I applied to be a freelancer and I got in and started being a freelancer for The Onion. And around this time, I also got a job as a photo researcher on Saturday Night Live. And they let me start submitting a jokes. A photo researcher? F photo researcher. What is that? Um, you know, like on, um, like for example, weekend update and they'll be like, you know, president Biden and uh -huh. they'll have a photo of him. Oh yeah. You have to clear that's all Biden. that. You have that's to, Biden. That's for Biden. For sure. I'm yeah, pretty that's sure. That's a funny job. <laughs> Stamp. That's him. But that's, but you have you to gotta clear find it. You got to find the photo. Oh, you you got to find the photo. You have to make sure you can use the rights to it, whether it's wow. Getty, you okay. know, or AP, like you have to like any photo. And you also, anytime you use a photo on a TV show, you have to make sure you have full rights to it in perpetuity so you can keep using it forever. Um, it's not like I'm a lawyer going through it, but it's more like I'm making sure that the photos they're using are photos that we can like re That's keep interesting using. interesting because it must be in that case too, they're, if they're making a new joke. Sometimes there's a quick timeline on that. I'm imagining yes. that you have to like quickly get approval for it. Absolutely. Have, absolutely. Any, anyone who was like, any photo that was like a challenge? Um, not off the top of my head. Cause again, this job was maybe 12 years ago or 13 years ago. There was definitely the, more of a challenge would be like a writer would send you. 
a photo that they might have seen online. And they were like, I, and not necessarily even for a weekend update. It could be like, you know, a background in um, mm -hmm. a sketch or like a poster or something. Yeah. And they'll be like, I saw this photo on Twitter or Facebook. We got to use this photo. And you'll like search for it. You'll do backwards because you can like search from a photo to yeah. see where it's from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've seen catfish. And yeah. exa exactly. <laughs> but exactly. And like, you'd have to go through this roundabout process and then be like, we can't use it. We don't know who owns it. And we can't get the rights to it. And then you have to have that conversation of like, can we build it a different way? Like, what if we put these pieces of different photos together to make what you want? Oh. Yeah. Um, what, a, what a crazy way to get in yeah. at SNL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then how did you start writing for Weekend Update from there where they just... Hey, ask the photo guy. Or they knew. They they knew. And back then, I think it has stopped now, but back then they let you kind of like the onion try out a bit and write jokes. And if you were good enough, it wasn't it if you were good enough, that didn't necessarily mean you'd get jokes on the show. Yeah. But they'd let you keep doing it. If you were That's so, so cool. bad at it, they they would like, you know, probably like we're good. Easy. Yeah, exactly. Not in a rude way. We're good on these emails. Right, exactly. <laughs> It, but 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 really though you know um, and so I'd send you know ten jokes a week and for a year or two I was getting nothing on because I wasn't I was still wasn't that good and I think I sort of in my head not cracked the code like I could do it every week but I began to get better at it and then I'd get like one on a week and then there were weeks when I'd get two or three on. Um, what was any that you're really proud of or any that you're really embarrassed by? Uh, I don't remember embarrassed by the ones I was embarrassed by weren't mine, but because I was the photo, one of the photo guys, I would be used in photos a lot. And oh. at the time, like I, and it was never complimentary. It was never, they <laughs> yeah. never like, were like, Hey, let's use you. <laughs> this, <laughs> like this. like there was oh, definitely, no. there was definitely, uh, there was some joke someone wrote. It wasn't me, but someone wrote some joke about like a Star Trek fan digging up a corpse. So I had to dress as like, and they wanted me to look bad. So I had to dress in a, in like a Spock outfit that was too, intentionally two sizes too small on my oh, body. No. And I had to like hold a shovel and like do a, I had to do a photo shoot looking awful. Yeah. Um, did you get a big pop? Did they go? It got, or, it did well. You took the photo and then you're like, you don't have the rights to this photo actually. Sorry. I talked with the owner. <laughs> now, how does this work when you're getting on a couple jokes, like, pers like let's yeah. say, and are you still labeled as photo researcher? Yeah. yeah. Is there any extra like writer credit pay? Money? Kind of no, yeah. that's, that's why they've kind of stopped doing it because it was a very gray area of freelancing. Uh -huh. um, I don't know when they stopped it, but I think they, they stopped it a while ago. But we get uh, you get a hundred bucks. You get a hundred bucks per joke. Per joke. On the show. Really? Wow. Yes. That's not a lot, but I could see it being really cool. It, 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 and you, when you're like 23 or 24 and really trying to break in, yeah. you know, I don't think I would do that necessarily now, but when I'm, you know, you're a kid and you, you you desperately just want to do anything in comedy. Well, totally. I think this is what's interesting about, you know, uh, uh, an industry like comedy yeah. where it's like, to me, I could see a time in my life where that entry point. Yeah might be more accessible because who that's not enough money for a lot of pros, yeah. but it allows accessibility into this big world. I right. mean, I think that was the argument, one of the arguments about like uh, uh, unpaid internships or, or right. just a degree uh -huh. of like, this is a way you can figure it out because you're not at a place where ready to give you a full-time staff position on Saturday right. Night Live, but you can submit jokes. Right. And it did lead places. Like, uh, yeah, because well, I mean, of- look, it helped you, right? Yeah, it helped me. Because of that. those jokes, Seth Meyers hired, like I was still a photo researcher when he hired me as a writer on the ESPN awards. And I don't know sports. I had to like cram sports That's for hard. two months. That's scary. Wow. But like, but if someone gives you that opportunity, if they're like, do you want to write on this award show in the summer? I, there's no world in which I could have been like, no, I don't like sports. I was like, fuck it. Two months. I'm going to learn cram, sports. How did you cram that? Um, I would feel I, if someone, had, if I had to write for that, I don't even know yeah. what I do. One, my brother and my father are both big sports fans, so I was able to be like, hey, what are like the big scandals of the year? And then literally Google things like biggest sports moments of the year, a Super Bowl recap. Like, because just like TV shows, there's World Series recaps. There's biggest scandals of the NBA playoffs. Like, any, yeah. like, like all the listicles that you see of anything, whether it be movies, out music, whatever, they have those for sports. And so I just did a deep dive into every who are, you know, who's the most hated people of whatever year that was or like yeah. who won trophies, you know, and then I would look at pictures of the popular players and be like, this person's attractive. We're going to do a joke about that. Or this person has, you know, look, their face looks like it's upside down. Let's go there. And so it was almost like cramming for an exam. Wow. Oh, God. Wow. Um, so do you remember any of those jokes? 
Um, I love, I love, I love monologue jokes. I love weekend update jokes. Just I, tight lines. I don't remember any of the ESPN awards jokes. Weekend update. Weekend update. I uh, the two that I remember, or the two that I really like. One was. Um, and I'm going to like butcher the exact saying, so I apologize. But one was something along the lines of the, in, you know, the inventor of the trampoline died this week at the age of 80 something. Uh, his family will always remember his last words. Look what I can do. Excellent. So just a just yeah. a just a nice yeah, weekend yeah. update joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one was and the other one almost didn't get it. And they t- to their credit, like to the writers in the room credit, even though I wasn't a writer, they fought for this joke. Uh huh. Um, so they were a good team. They weren't like, I know that sometimes it sounds like a hundred bucks, like you were getting screwed, but they really were helping me. Um, whether or not the deal was entirely fair is up to other people, but I sure. did get a lot of help out of it. Um, you remember that joke? The joke was, uh, it was uh, an apartment building in New York City. Uh, residents of an apartment building in New York City are upset because they learned that their, uh, su- that their building super is a registered sex offender. And I was like, but on the bright side, if I know building supers, it'll take him forever to get around to molesting your kids. <laughs> that's so oh, good. That's a really that's good such joke. a great joke. Oh, that's so funny. Like that was because my thought when I read the story was like, well, yeah, but supers don't do anything. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And it, it got on. It got on. It got yeah. on the show. Were you in the room when they were fighting for it? No, but they were like, they were like the standards and practices really wanted to cut this one. And we fought for it because we liked it, which was very sweet of them because it was none of theirs. Like yeah, what year is this? Oh boy, uh, this must have been two. Th- I want to say either two thousand nine or two thousand ten, but it could have been it's two thousand eight to two thousand ten. But I don't know okay. the exact time. So I'm curious. Just before we go into all the strike stuff, w- take me to where you're making a a, a living, and and uh, what kind of contract, what kind of role that was from uh, SNL. So you're, okay. you're you're making. Are you making okay money as this image researcher? No, no, no I'm making pretty not terrible money, not poverty wages, but like. Not not very much. much sharing, I feel like numbers help people. I would I would probably say maybe forty five thousand a year. Okay. And this was again like two thousand years ago, two thousand eight to two thousand ten. Yeah. So not not That's great why I money spend on this podcast per week. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. It's killing me. Not great money in New York City, but like I found, I lived in uh like a nice basement apartment in Queens that was kind mm-hmm. of like you know crummy now but like again when i was like 24 was awesome and it was a cool studio apartment and a nice part of queens um it was deep 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 ass queens yeah, yeah but yeah. it was still you know an apartment i could afford on my paycheck sure yeah um but it wasn't much money but uh so towards after about two years there um i kind of like had a talk with not seth but someone else and i was kind of like you know do you think they'd ever make me a writer here i'll get jokes on the show i feel like i contribute and they were kind of like maybe in a few years and I didn't want to wait that long. Yeah. So I had an opportunity to go work for Nintendo of America. So I just moved to Seattle and worked at Nintendo for two years. Uh, and what was your job there? I was uh, an English localization editor, uh, which means I worked with a Japanese translator to rewrite scripts to make sense in English. Do you feel like looking back like a uh, little Julia Roberts, like big mistake, huge. You could have had me on the SNL staff or looking back. Are you like, yeah, I get why they want someone who's been doing it a little longer. Um, I don't think it's either. I think it's somewhere in the middle along the lines of, you know, um, you know, kind of like almost like a, like I'm not going to wait around forever for you to marry me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, it yeah, looks yeah. like it looks like this place is pretty eager to have me. I'm going to go over here. But it wasn't it wasn't bad. It wasn't like I, I fucking quit. It was after the season was over. I yeah, just yeah, said, yeah. hey, I'm not going. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to come back next season, which is never sour. Like, it's as long as you're polite about it, it's never sour grapes. It's never mean. It wasn't like you give me a job or I'm gone. It was more like I had the understanding at the end of the season that that was not in the cards. I'm going to go. Yeah. But I didn't tell them that was why. It wasn't like you didn't make me a writer, so I'm gone. It was more just like I have this great opportunity. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, so you go to Nintendo. Go to Nintendo. Now are you making a good salary? A little more. I would say about probably like 60, 65,000. But that was, again, I was like at the very, it's a good department to be in, but I was at the bo- very bottom of the ladder in that department. Yeah. So you're in Seattle. You've, yeah. you've, you've extricated yourself from, yeah. from some of the comedy. Were you doing a lot of side comedy projects or were you out? Yeah. No, I was doing a ton of side comedy. I mean, the nice thing was because, you know, I was a small fish in a 
big pool in New York. And so when I moved to Seattle, I had already had a lot of stand-up experience. So I was sort of like a medium-sized fish in a medium-sized pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I got to do a lot of stand-up. I got to do a lot of featuring at different clubs in Seattle and Tacoma. Um, I got to, yeah, I got to open for a ton of great people just because I, I sort of defaulted to being one of the more experienced comedians who wasn't on the road all the time. So a lot of people like yeah. Mark Marin would sweep through and I would be their feature act. Sure. Nice. Were you... What did you care about being better at more, stand-up or writing? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think neither. I think whichever seemed to be serving me the best at the moment uh-huh. is what I preferred. Um, it wasn't like, you know, my dream is to be the world's most famous comedian, and it wasn't the world's most famous writer. It was almost more like if you were a juggler and you're like, I just want to keep juggling. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. I just want, I don't want someone to come and tell me that this is done, you have failed. Yeah. So as long yeah. as I get to keep juggling things, I'm happy. Sure. So, okay, so take me take me where you leave Nintendo. Where are you going? So I leave Nintendo. Uh, I get hired for, this is the first time I had a job where I was like, oh, I'm making good money, except I moved to San Francisco to write uh, comedy videos about video games. Kind of like, I, I had been doing comedy, I'd been getting noticed, and this website sort of was like, hey, we know that you know video games, we know that you're doing a lot of comedy, would you like to come write videos for us? For a year. It was a year contract. And I knew that it was probably not longer than a year, but it was the first time it was like 90,000, which is a huge jump, especially for me, who'd never made anything near that amount. Yeah. Is this all non-union still? This is all non-union. This is all, I mean, Nintendo's video games, which are very, very few companies are union video games and no Japanese companies are. Um, I don't think was was this a new company the 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 new San or, Francisco the, no the same no 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 it was an old it was a video game site called IGN oh, okay. so it existed forever but they were trying to break into doing like funny content yeah it just feels like one of those things where you're like this thing's not gonna be around for a while like if they're <laughs> that, paying me ninety thousand yeah. dollars to come do this like yeah. new thing you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I think the and the initiative yeah. wasn't the <laughs> initiative <laughs> ended soon after real, I left the quibby situation you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. right some money and, but you know yeah well, but like imagine like Netflix started. A Quibi. Yeah. So like yeah, you're like yeah, Netflix yeah. will be fine, but the Quibi part won't. Yes. And yeah. so that was kind of the situation. And it was to nobody's fault. They put a lot of effort into it. P- people watched it. I think it just like the numbers didn't necessarily come out that it was worth what they were spending. Yeah. 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 Um so then what was you when did you join the the union? So so uh during my one year at IGN, I did New Faces at Montreal, the Montreal Comedy Festival. Um, which got me some more traction. And then from both that and from Seth Meyers' recommendation, I got hired at uh, Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. It was Late Night with Jimmy Fallon at the time. And that was my first full-time staff TV job. And that's what got me into the WGA. And how did that job pay? That job paid, I mean, I was making, I think, the union minimum. And it was more money than I'd ever made in my life. Uh, It was, I think at the time, something like 200,000. Really? Yeah. And how long was the contract? Uh, for late night shows, contracts are 13 weeks. So you get to work 13 weeks and then they decide whether they want to renew you or not. But when you say 200,000, you mean- A year. A, a year. year. Should that contract get renewed for a year? How long does that go year? on for that you do the 13 the week renewals? Um, essentially, so like, let's say I was hiring you. I might give you a two year contract with 13 week cycles. Okay. So that means like, you know, for, for two- quarterly. Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. quarterly cycles. Um, so essentially, like, you, I have you for two years. You, you could quit. Like, I mean, it's kind of silly in its own way because if you were like, I want to go, they're not going to be like, we have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very rarely. If you were like the star of a television show, they yes. might. But as a writer on a late night show. Jimmy's if, like, hey. Right. <laughs> I, I want to go on the road. Right. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, so you get like a two-year contract and every 13 weeks you can – They can let you go, essentially. The good thing about that is, one, they can only let you go at that time. Like, if they're like, hey, we're we're clashing with your personality. We can't fire you for cause. Like, they can fire you for sexual harassment or something. But let's just say... I. I don't like your attitude. There goes your late night career. But keep going. <laughs> but like, I don't like I don't like your attitude. I don't want you to come back for the next four weeks. Yeah. yeah. I still, they would still have to pay you those last four weeks. So if they fired you seven weeks into a 13 week cycle. Sure. You still get, still paid, get paid out that 13, 13 weeks. weeks. And I think this is, as we go into this, I think one of the hardest things with like communicating uh, showbiz money stuff yeah. to those not in the business, especially yeah. with acting, is like people go like, Oh, you for a guest star, you got paid six grand for a week's worth. What are you complaining about? It's like, yeah, but I got two guest stars 
this year. Right. It's like the 13 week contract thing. I think it's just the, the whole model is so different. Yes. That you could just work 13 and then you're out. And it's hard to get another gig. So it's it just is. so nice hard for, I think, outsiders to understand the numbers yeah. and, and, and the, the shortness of the jobs, which is related to, yeah. you know, where the strike is going. So when you got this job, is this a good deal? Is the 13 week thing obnoxious? Do you think it's fair? I mean, you know, how old were you at this point? 28. So it's good. Yeah. 28. You feel, you're feeling. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think, I think it was fair for me. I didn't have much experience. Um, I don't think I would have accepted that rate. I didn't accept that rate when I went back last time. Um, but, uh, you know, I was really new. I had written for a lot of award shows, but like award shows are different than a daily talk show. Um, so I think it was, I think it was fair. Now the, th the other thing, you know, that people don't know is like I had an agent manager and lawyers and those all take out percentages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So about 25% of my check pre-taxes was going to representatives and still happens for almost every project I work on. And those are the, those people, to be fair, negotiate better deals for me or negotiate me out of deals if I want to get out of a deal, although that hasn't really happened. They help, you know, they've helped me find work. So th they earn the money I give them. But, you know, when I say 200000 was really what I was taking home was 150 before taxes, then after taxes, less than that, which is still a lot of money, but it does chip away slowly. Mm -hmm. Did you ever live in fear when that 13-week, uh, came around. Yeah. Or were you scared all the time? In fact, I was told to stop, to stop being so scared. Are those formal sit downs or are you just getting email? Like thumbs up. You're still here. Like how does, if you're still here, it's usually thumbs up. You're still here. Uh -huh. Like usually your agent or manager, or if you don't have one, they'll email you and they'll be like, you're renewed. Like oh, that's it. They'll be it. like, we're going yeah. to, we're going to exercise your next cycle. But if you get a meeting on the books, it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But usually the meeting on the books is like, Hey, we're going to renew you. However, it's going to be like a probationary period. We'd really like you to, you know, pick things up in the next 13 weeks or else we might have to think about cutting you. Oh, like, man. I mean, that sucks, but at least. That's an inspiring. Yeah. But here's the thing is you still at least have 13 weeks versus like I want to have a meeting after this episode's done just so you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right. Um, okay. So, so, so you do that. Yeah. I, I, I want to avoid getting too timeliney here. Yeah. But, uh. So then from there, is Samantha B after this? Uh, Bill Nye Saves the World is after that. So much fucking shit. Yeah. Bill Nye. Uh, well, just let's go through what your title. So your title for that was staff writer? Uh, st for uh, Fallon staff writer, Bill Nye was head writer. Um, was that with Joanna Hosman? Yes, that okay. was with Joanna yeah, yeah, Hosman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, for Adam Ruins Everything, I was a writer producer. Um, Which is a step above head writer or different? Different. 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 Okay. It, it's different. It, I wouldn't, I would say it's below head writer, but it, it gave me not privileges, but it was a title higher than staff writer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, then on president show, I was just a regular writer. Um, and then Samantha B, I was a regular writer and then became over time head writer and executive producer. Now, all right. Just before we get to the, the strike, I do have one question because you have worked in a lot of like educational comedy, sure. which I find very interesting because sure. do you have any philosophy in terms of like how to make good? I feel like it's always like it's either not funny enough. Sure. Yeah. Or it's there's it's so, so much so much liberal comedy feels. I think I've gotten to a point where I'm like, this feels like propaganda right now. Sure, sure, sure. And I really hate it. I feel really just the moment it feels like that. I'm like, yeah, Ugh. yeah, that's and, fair. And, uh, do you have any, like, w have you learned anything in, in your doing this educational comedy? Like what your approach is? Um, my approach and what I think is true, and I found this both on Bill Nye and Sam B, that the more narrow you go at the slice of the conversation, the better you can do it. Interesting. So if you're like, Here's why Donald Trump's bad. It's vague and it is sort of becomes preachy. But if you're like, here's how, like we did a segment that did not sound like it'd be interesting, but became really interesting and fun. But it's like, here's how the sand industry is actually doing a ton of environmental damage that nobody cares about because it's sand. Uh -huh. And like, it was this whole story about like how there's like only like, Sand and con like sand and different things needs different types of sand. And so, you know, you can't just go to a beach and get sand for concrete. You have to go to a special place that has a special type of sand because the shape of the granules are different. Yeah. And that all sounds boring, but it's so specific and it's also surprising. I think the other thing that you're probably hitting on, which I, I admit happened to us, happens on a lot of shows. 
where you already know a lot about the topic, so you're just hearing people sort of repeat what you already know and feel back to you. Yeah. And that's why I also think narrow slices are always better because even if you know a topic, if you're like, oh, I didn't know that, like, you know, uh, n- nuclear weapons had this specific thing that happened in 1977. I didn't know that. You know, like, you get to learn a little more versus being like, yes, I agree this is bad. Yes, we should not be doing this. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I would say I would say just the more specific you are, the more funny you can make it. Yeah, I, I, the one that always pops in my mind in terms of it like, oh, it's gone off the rails a little, and I'll speak on it so you don't, but when Colbert had the people dressed as vaccine shots and they were dancing and it was like, get the vaccine. And that's where I was like, what's going on now? Right, right, Everyone right. in this room is vaccinated. They right. all agree with this. Everyone agrees with it. Right. And now they're dancing as needles. Yeah. Where's the, where's the, what are we doing? Yeah. There's just a lot of like people in the room being, and I know those older people who go like, yeah, Trump is stupid. Yeah. He's going to go to jail. I'm yeah, like, no, mom, he's not. My mom he's loves never it. going to. <laughs> Who's going to take him there? The police officer who voted for him? You're right. out of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, I'm curious about um, writing for a specific host's voice. Yeah. Like, in terms of of their involvement, I just feel like that, it seems like it would be a daunting thing to have to do. Is that a skill you have? Is that yeah. something you, for yeah. other people's voices? Yeah, 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 I can do that. And, um, and how long, like, how does, do you have a process of like, I don't know, it just seems like it'd be like a, you'd have to like really like fine tune how you do that. I just feel mm-hmm. like it, it doesn't seem like a natural thing that you, you have to acquire over time. Probably. It's not a natural thing over time, but you know, you kind of, you know, um, Think about an impressionist, the way an impressionist might do a character where mm-hmm. you kind of like study the celebrity a little bit. And you kind of know their mannerisms. You might know what they don't say, mm-hmm. you know, and so I'll watch it before I get a job. I'll usually watch a ton of the show. I'll try to like, you know, feel out the rhythms of speech, feel out where they like to pause, what they don't necessarily say. Sometimes you like, you know, when um, people write packets for a show like Fallon and they're like, do you have any advice? I'm like, don't swear and don't mention sex, not because you know, those are like taboo, but because he'll never do those on the show. And therefore you're putting in something that automatically marks it as a, he would never do that. Yeah. And, um, that's specific to him. But what I'm saying is like, you got to watch and figure out where they move, what they say, what they think, what they think is funny. Um, you know, Jimmy Fallon does a lot of act outs. Sam B does no act outs. And so if you give Jimmy a script with zero act outs, that is like a long explainer. He's not going to like it. If you give Sam something, that's all her doing like different accents of different celebrities. She's going to look at it like, yeah. you, like the worst thing ever. So if I was writing for you, all the punchlines will be all caps, yeah, maybe yeah. slightly bigger yes, font. Yes, right. Yes, yells yes, it. Yes, yells yes, it. Yes, size 24 f- font. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Okay, so it sounds like you've had a pretty good career. Why the fuck are you striking then? It seems like everything's going pretty great for you. Well, th- one, first of all, things are going uh, downhill for everybody. So even yes, if yeah. things are fine for me, one, things won't be fine for me forever. I know I'm <laughs> like my first uh, full-time writing job was 28. And I was like, oh my God, I'm young. I'm going to do this. And I'm 39 now. And I'm like, I got two years left before they like kick me out in airlock. Um, do you, is there, you feel that you feel like after this, it's Bill Maher. <laughs> I, I will say this. Uh, when I first started doing comedy, Bill Maher was the first packet I did, and I got to the final round of it. Wow. And not getting that job must have been, like, the nicest, like, dodged bullet ever. Yeah. Um, I imagine some rooms are older and younger. Yeah, and yeah. That room has got to be young, old. Young, it is. Young, that, that room is young and hip. Young, young, young. That room is old. In that room. Everyone <laughs> introducing with their pronouns right yeah. out the gate. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, I think that room is everyone's fifth, like 50 plus. Yes. Which is a, fine. There's, There's a jobs. lot of good. There's got to be jobs for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like. <laughs> we and, don't have to watch it all yeah. the time, but like, you know. And in 10 years, I'm sure I'll be like, ah, Gen Z. Yeah. And then I'll be more than happy to take Bill Maher's money. In 10 years, you write me that email like, hey, could we take out the Bill Maher part in that old <laughs> yeah, episode? Yeah, 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 yeah. I really need the money. <laughs> um, oh, Bill. Oh, oh Bill. Bill. Um, okay, so so why where, am I striking? Where, yeah. where, where is the breakdown let, let's put AI to the side because sure. that's its own yeah. new beast. Yeah. But where where did the breakdown start happening in terms of these contracts aren't looking so good anymore or it's yeah. no longer so fair? Is it is it streaming? Streaming is the main thing. Um, it's a few different things, which makes it sometimes hard because people want there to be like the big issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's almost like when you break up with someone and it's like not because of one big fight, but it's like you're like, OK, I think I think we need to talk because enough things have built up. Um, yeah. Regarding streaming, the problem with streaming right now is there's the minimums aren't very good. Like, like you would think that 
the minimum pay you could get for a streaming show must be much higher than a network show because everybody watches streaming. Who watches NBC or who watches ABC? The thing is, one, way more people watch NBC and ABC still. And two, those pay way higher. So like your minimum, let's say you're on Law & Order, brand new writer. You wrote a play that was a hit. They took you. They put you as a Law & Order writer. It's your first year. You're going to make a ton of money because it's network. Mm -hmm. And it's Law & Order. But network, a ton of money. And when they rerun it, a ton of money because it's network. Now, let's say- Same with acting. Same. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's say you went on cable. It's a little bit less, but still pretty good. Um, Again, every time they run it, you get good money. Minimum's good money. Streaming minimums are terrible across the board. And for comedy variety, which include like things like, uh, you know, like Hassan Minaj's show, those weren't able to have minimums. Like they had to themselves fight to pay their writers. And why? How did- how did they get away with such shitty terms and not just they had to do what cable did or do what network did? Because during the last strike in 2007, 2008, one of the smaller negotiating points was what to do with this new site, YouTube. Uh, what are we going to do with YouTube? This, this site that came out two years ago, mind you. So it wasn't YouTube of today. It was yeah, two years ago. Yeah. And shows were just, you know, like shows were just starting to put on a sketch they did or a commercial for the show. And the mm. question was, how do we pay people for these small clips Streaming. that are being put on this website? And the monetization system for YouTube probably was in its infancy. Exactly. Too. Exactly. So they're like, okay, well, nobody's making any money off this. Um, all right, so we'll set the terms like this. And unfortunately, those terms at the time made sense because, you know, they literally thought that YouTube was going to be a place you put like clips and trailers. They didn't realize that, you know, the way the legal description of it was would eventually become Netflix and Hulu and Disney plus. Yeah. 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 And so the deal was made back in an era when we did not know how big streaming would be. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was no hint at it to be fair. This wasn't like 2014 or something where you're like house of cards is out. What are we doing? Like literally they had no clue, but that's why things are so bad now. This was the last strike or the last strike. 2007. 2007, How often is the negotiation? Every three years, every three years. Okay. So got it. So this was the last strike. 2020, we probably would have struck then, but it was the pandemic, so we had no leverage. No shows were being oh made. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Fascinating. So, okay, so were you part of the strike or were you not writing yet? I wasn't writing it. You weren't writing it. How long was it? It was till, it, I think it was November to like February. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, it was like four or five we'll months. Yeah. About it. Is yeah. it considered a success? Was that considered a success for the writers at the time? Um, yes and no. Um I think there's actually debate within, not the guild as, a, as an entity, but members of the guild. I was not there for it, so it's hard for me to suss out. And some of the things they negotiated for, people criticize now, but at the time made a lot of sense. Uh-huh. Like um, residual payments on DVD and Blu-ray sales were very, very low. So that was a big negotiation point. <laughs> what oh, what a sad waste of time. Right. But at the time, yeah, that made sense. It was, yeah. yeah, of course. You know, at the time in 2007, you're like, well, no one's going to stop buying these movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we have entire stores that are just giant racks of DVDs. And so it made sense. But now it's often criticized as sort of uh, a mistake. But you could not have known that. Back of course, then. of course. Um, and so in that way, some people consider it a failure because they, cons- they some of the biggest achievements we got aren't necessarily the most needed. However, you know, it kept the pension and healthcare fund going. It kept a lot of things going. And at the very least, it might not have solved the streaming problem, but it put something like at least our foot was in the door. Yes. So, you know, we didn't we didn't create the problem as it is now. The problem was going to be a problem no matter what. We didn't successfully stop it from happening, but at least we got some of ourselves into it so we can now widen mm-hmm. what we want. So, okay, so then how did these these problems start getting worse, uh, at least with yeah. streaming? Yeah, um, uh, a couple ways. One, um, with the streaming model, and whether this is a cultural change or done by streaming companies, but one thing is we're now doing shorter seasons. Shows have shorter seasons. Shows have 10 right. episodes. You know, like... A lot of network shows like Law & Order will still do 22, 24, but, you know, like something like Succession, 10 episodes, something Mm -hmm. like Game of Thrones, 10 episodes. And one, that means there's just a shorter writing room, you know? So rather than being maybe employed for 24 weeks on a show, um, by the way, these shows don't work with 13-week cycles. That only applies to like comedy variety shows, game shows. Um, That's a little more on sort of a dip, like almost an island. Um, But uh, so like, you know, where you used to work, 24 weeks, 26 weeks on a show, you might be working 10. And so a ton of money over 26 weeks might be pretty good money over 10, but not less, like if you're making, let's say like, 
let's say you're on a show making 7,000 a week. Mm -hmm. Good mid pay for, you know, maybe, you know, like let's, you know, good mid, mid, mid career pay, not necessarily the best, not necessarily the worst. Yes. Um, and you're making that for 30 weeks. That's amazing. Uh huh. If you're making that for eight weeks, that's good. But what if it's another six months before you get another job? Yeah. yeah. And that's the problem is you make a lot of money per week. N nobody would deny that. Sure. But if we cut down those weeks by three fourths, suddenly that ain't so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's part of the, one of the problems too. They have developed something that's called a mini room that you've probably heard of. And mini room, the description almost sounds like, okay, you just have fewer writers, which you do. But the problem is, is it's almost a legal loophole. So when you green light a show, when you're like, this show is being made, what you get to do, what you have to do is you have to pay everyone a certain amount because the show is being made and they're officially hired. And a mini room is this idea where it's like, well, we haven't greenlit the show yet. So we're going to have a couple writers get in the room, plan out the entire show, start writing scripts for it, and then we'll tell you if we're going to do the show. And the problem with that is, one, they can do that in any time frame they want because the show hasn't started yet. And two, there's far fewer protections, so it's a lot easier to kind of screw people over. Mm. It's a lot easier to be like, you're a higher level writer. Usually your rate is very high, but this is a mini room. We're going to pay you maybe half of what you normally and make. And they just created this out of whole cloth, or, or was this part of negotiations in the past? Whole, whole cloth. Whole, whole cloth basically almost like figured out they could do this. It was, you know, It's kind of like a little loophole. And- one of the reasons they can do that to sidestep more is the way things used to work is, you know, in the back half of the year, you would start buying and making, you know, developing shows. And then early in the year, you would have your pilots for shows. Yeah. And then those shows would become shows. Mm. But now that's all rolling all year, which is good. It's new it's shows. Good. It Well, the fact that we make new shows all year is good because it doesn't mean you, you know, your chances for becoming an actor or a writer are a window of like January to March. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, just yeah. just for for listeners who, who don't fully know, I mean, the you, you can correct me if I'm wrong from the actor's yeah. perspective, at least pilot season used to be a very specific time at the beginning yeah. of the year where agents and managers would tell me. Don't go out of town for pilot Don't season, go out of right? Town. And you wouldn't get anything. But yeah. they 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 shoot a bunch of pilots. Pilot is the test yeah. episode, and there's so many pilots made with so many stars that you would die to see. But basically, if the show doesn't get made, they get buried. You rarely see them, if ever. Yeah. yeah. And and all this stuff exists out in the world on a hard drive somewhere. And I forget what percentage actually get made on average, but very you, little. You'd be very little. Yeah. You'd be shocked, and some of them are great. And then streaming sort of upended it to a degree, partially because like House of Cards, right. they said, we know this is going to be good. I mean, it makes more sense. I don't know. I don't know if pilots make sense. They, they, they make sense, but because they can now do them at any time, because in the past, to go off what you're saying is, uh, they had to start, they had to have a pilot shot and a show made at a specific date because they have agreed with their advertisers. That's when our new season starts. Yes. So you don't necessarily have that time to fuck around. I see. Whereas now you have time to be like, oh, okay, we'll let you play with this idea for a bit before we see if we want to make it. Because yeah. like all the time, even big shows, they'll be like, ah, we're delayed. We're two weeks later than we said we would be because on streaming that matters a little less. Yeah. So yeah. companies now have the luxury to take their time, which ironically means they have the luxury to make people work faster because, you know, they can be like, no, we don't like it. Well, you worked for four weeks. We'll throw it out. Someone else will work for four weeks and do it because it doesn't necessarily matter when that pilot is made. Because streaming is is more flexible, flexible yeah. as opposed to network TV, which was why, why was network TV not ads, as flexible? Because you're selling ads. Because you're basically in saying in a cycle, in a seasonal, in a cycle. seasonal cycle. Because you're yeah. like oh, you're like okay, you're gonna give us a hundred thousand dollars for your beer commercial on the premiere of this season of this popular show. So we are scheduled to air your beer commercial at eight fifteen on this date for this show. Like that's how the deals are. And so if you don't have that new season, suddenly the beer company is like, we paid for a new episode, so we'll give you less money you know yeah, or yeah. like we'll do the deal of the rerun deal yeah yeah whereas with streaming even though there's ads now with streaming there's a little more like okay we didn't get it's not going to be here you know july 17th it's going to be here july 31st and yeah. fans are like ah but it it doesn't affect them monetarily as much sure yeah. sure so when these mini rooms come out was there was did people realize how bad this was from the get um People realized they were weird from the get. They didn't realize they'd become the norm. I think at first they were a little more like, oh, they're doing, oh. They're, yeah, they're doing, they're doing a mini room for this. Okay. Uh, oh, all right. And now it's become much, 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 much more the norm. 
And so like, you know, instead of having 10 people plot out a season for the regular pay, you can get three or four people plot out the season for less pay. Yeah. Um, and then go, yeah, we'll do the show and sort of be like, oops, scripts already written. And then you can sort of like skip uh, ahead a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we got we got streaming problems in yeah. general, shorter seasons. Shorter seasons. We got this concept of the mini room. Yeah. Any other any other big things oh. before we touch an AI? And the other thing with uh, minimums and streaming is there's also residuals in streaming. So yeah. when they rerun it, uh, like I said earlier, when they rerun it on network, you get a good m- amount of money. When they rerun it on cable, you get a decent amount of money. Streaming residuals are awful, both because of the contract, but also because there's no honest way for us to know how many people have viewed yeah, there's a thing. And, and, this yeah. is, and this is the same for commercials. Yeah. And what's so infuriating about this is, in theory, you should be able to get the number of watches way more accurately yep. yeah. than you were with, with TV. Yep. TV, and you had to go off of the, the Nielsen. Nelson, the Nielsen. Nielsen. It feels like the, 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 the studios are in this position where you're like, if they're trying to inflate their numbers, yeah. They they can't in a way because then they don't want to give the people credit for getting all these streams. Yeah. So they in theory have to pay them. Yeah. But but they want to have see everyone's watching this show. The streaming numbers are huge, so it's this you know that they have the numbers. Of There's course a they of, have the oh, numbers. You know. It's literally in a computer. Yeah. So just real yeah. quick, the Nielsen is is can you define it better? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it so wrong, but the Nielsen at least what I remember of it was basically you got the special box that you would. Uh, like your family would get a box and they would pay for your, I think cable or whatever. And you would tell, tell the box or push a button on the box or something to like, let them know what you were watching when you were watching it. And a ton of families do it. I'm, I'm sure it's different now than what I thought it was in like 1995. I, I got a thing, an application for it once. Really? Um, oh, that's sent, great. They sent $2 with it. Like, like it was like, and then they, I filled out the initial paperwork and then they sent uh, another dollar back with another thing. And then I didn't go further with the sure. process. Cause I was like, if you had done it, lots of spookies would still be on the air. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so it basically bottom line is it took a sample size and extrapolated. Yeah. Yes. Whereas with streaming, they somehow made it less money, even though they could actually know for sure. They know for sure. What was yeah. getting watched, but places like Netflix don't reveal their numbers because then they have more leverage then they can say whatever they want. They can say the show is a hit. Right. Well, I mean, and that's that self yeah. perpetuates itself. You know, that's why when they do press releases, you know, a company will be like the most watched show since this, yeah. or one of or more views than any of our other movies. They're never going to be like 100 million people watch this. But soon they're going to have to because you have to to get commercials, which is yes. the new model that they're switching to. And, and yes. there's some law that makes it if you are going to sell yes commercials, you, you have, have to reveal the numbers. the numbers. Yes. So hopefully that'll help us. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. So the residuals suck. Yeah. And okay. So 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 all that stuff. Yeah. Which, to me, and this is from as an yeah. outside perspective, I'm like, okay, that all seems like regular strike. Yeah. Stuff that can be worked out and hopefully a good deal. Yeah. AI. AI. Yeah. Feels like we are all collectively wondering what is the existential threat to humanity posed. Right. Not necessarily by AI becoming a Terminator and killing us all, though, sure, that's right. to be feared, but to making jobs obsolete. Right. Personally, I think a little bit of this is Silicon Valley being overhyped and yes. hyping itself up. And I, for example, I said I have this uh, taxidermy mouse yeah. and I Googled uh, uh, stand-up comedian names with a cheese pun and the results were atrocious. Yeah. I couldn't use it professionally. Oh, you yeah. did the like chat GPT. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know, you'll see, I think Ben, ben Shapiro shared something where he was like, it's over for writers, which by the way, the, the, the conservative thing against writers, as if it didn't take writers to write Big Bang Theory, is infuriating. Ben, ben Shapiro also wanted to be a screenwriter and failed. Both yes. of his parents worked in Hollywood. Sorry. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. But, but the bottom line is like he shared, uh, someone typed in a uh, write a scene from the office or whatever. Right. And it was like, it's not, it's impressive. It's, it's cool, but it's not ready to film. Yes. But I feel like this debate is so much harder because we don't even like, like yeah. similar yeah. to what you were talking about with YouTube back in the day. Yeah. We don't know where this is going to go. Right. Yes. And they, and the, the studios might be, uh, uh, hesitant to sign away too much, yes. Just in case, in two years, you can go write a new season of The Office yeah. and right. it spits out and an it amazing season. And it feels like it, it goes beyond writing. It feels like a, a, an existential. Oh yeah, like it's a it's a 
big thing that feels like it's so weighty in so many terms. It, it yeah. just feels like it's, it's beyond I, that. Yeah, I mean, it's going to affect actors. It's going to affect musicians. I mean, there's just like there's things that can write. Like people are making things where it's like, you know, make me a soft study music jam and it'll generate, you know, a song. So it's going to affect artists. It's going to even affect like actors. Like imagine if you, instead of doing like, hey, we're going to do a couple takes on it. We're like, you know what? We got it. We're just going to adjust it with the AI. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So instead of you working a full day, we got you half. We can, we yeah. can fix it in post. Yeah. Oh man. Oh. And, and there's a big question again, just for those, especially like with music, the way it makes this stuff is pulling from past yeah. examples. Now so there's a big question about how does copyright apply here? And yeah. I feel like there's going to be some big Supreme Court cases in the next I, couple of years. Oh, definitely. That really question where this is going to go. Yes. But first of all, does AI, do you ever have moments of existential fear when you think about AI? Um, no. Here's my theory about AI. Now, this is my near future theory. This is like my five to 10 year theory. I don't know in 25 years. Um, my theory is that at first AI won't take jobs. It'll just make jobs worse and let lesser paid. And here's how. Um, rather than saying, hey, I want you to write, um, you know what? We're doing, we're doing a, a new, uh, we're, I don't know, rebooting Iron Man. And I want you to write it. You would write it from the beginning. You'd be paid as the original writer. And even if they switched you out, someone else comes in, your name's still on it in some way. You still get some credit but you're the original writer. And I would pay you as the original writer. Now, let's say I said, hey, chat GPT, write me a new Iron Man reboot. It gives me an Iron Man reboot, it's not very good, but then I can hire you at a much smaller rate to fix it. Yeah. So then like, even if it's a top to bottom rewrite, I'm like, well, you're not the originator of it. You didn't write the first draft. Your name will still be on it, but you're more of a helper. You did punch up, you didn't yeah. really write it. ChatGPT wrote it, you fixed it. And that's gonna happen to music, it's gonna happen to art. Like imagine like monster design where you just type in AI, I want a giant mechanical spider that ha shoots lasers and you get it and you're like, ah, that doesn't look right. I'll hire this guy to fix it in Photoshop rather than a designer to make it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to destroy jobs. I don't think someone's gonna write, you know, write me a new season of Friends and write me uh, and have everyone fake act it out. And then you get that episode and it's seamless. What I imagine it'll more be like is like, hey, I made this piece of shit, and because you didn't make it, I don't have to pay you for making it, but I can pay you to fix it. Do you yeah. blame the studio person? Because we're calling it a piece of shit, but right. there could come a point where it's a good start. Yeah, yeah. Good I, first draft. Do you, because I think there's two things here. Yeah. Like One is like, well, if we're going to do that, can we still compensate the writer to make up for the fact that, you know, can we have the writer have a living. Right. But then there's a deeper emotional existential one of like, this sucks. Sure. Yeah. This sucks that ChatGPT is going to write all the rest of Marvel. Like there is a degree. Right. I think this is like, I don't think capitalism cares about this at right. all yeah. in no. general, the march of capitalism of just like, no. this is kind of lame. Isn't it cool that, some. Martin Scorsese directed the movie and not... And I think that'll be the saving grace for a lot of things. Yeah. I think people are fans... You know, the reason people go to concerts isn't because they want to hear the song worse than it sounds on Spotify. They want to go to the concert because they're a fan of the performer. Like, you know, if I wrote a song that sounded exactly like the Beatles and you were a Beatles fan, you'd be like, yeah, that sounds like the Beatles. But you wouldn't be like, this is as good as the Beatles. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. are... Uh, now, that doesn't necessarily mean... Like, I do think it'll take jobs and things like you know, technical writing. Like there's a person who makes their living writing a manual for your blender. And I can imagine that job being supplanted by something like AI mm -hmm. because that's a little less creative and you, you'll you still have an editor go through it, make sure it's all right. Like I could see technical writing that doesn't need a lot of human emotion instructions, mm -hmm. yeah. medical guide work, things like that. Um, but you'll still need editors. You'll still have those people. But again, those people who might have written the whole Blender manual themselves will now be editing it and probably at less money. Because a lot sure. of this AI yeah. stuff, you know, if if AI could make something much better than what people make and everyone bought into it, I might have mixed feelings, but at least I would respect that it's doing that. Mm. I think, and I think that might be the 25 years in the future and maybe even 10, maybe I'm overestimating or underestimating. The problem I think right now is it's going to be used to save money. And it's going to be used to save money by basically making you do your same job, but a little bit harder because we said something else already did the job first. Mm -hmm. And what, 
where do you think this is gonna go? I mean, how how are you feeling? How how is everyone feeling? So just a little. Uh, so this is coming out on Tuesday. Yeah, I I voted uh, for SAG. Did you? Are you SAG? I'm running SAG. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, no, I didn't know. I was just checking. <laughs> I was just checking. But I, I voted for SAG to authorize yeah. the strike. But obviously, people are going to vote yes. Actors are not happy either. We'd love an excuse that we're not working. And a lot of the same threats we have, you have. Yes. And then and then we would strike, and then potentially the Directors Guild? Is is that the other? That, that's the hope. That's That that would be the hat trick. DGA is a little harder, um, just because I feel like they're a bit smaller and have fewer... Outra- out, outrageous and outstanding needs as both SAG and the W. I feel like SAG and the WJ are in the same boat. Uh huh. And the DJ is in a boat next to our boat. So we're like close, but we're yeah, not yeah, in yeah. the same exact yeah. boat. Sure. And w- first of all, how long has it been now, the strike? Do you know? This is, we are closing out, I've, I think closing out week three or four. And what was the longest one in, in the past? Was there a 200 day one I had seen? I, I I honestly don't know. I know that it at the very. I don't think that two thousand seven two thousand eight was the longest, but it might have been the second longest. I think like a few months. So I think uh, just a side note. What was funny? There was a there was a co- there was a commercial recently. I'm not going to say what it is, but all the comments were saying like, "This is what happens when oh, the writers strike. Yeah. This is this. Look how bad this yeah. is." Yeah. And what was funny is. It was completely written before the writer's yeah. strike. Yeah, P- people have the you know it's the, the 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 layman thinks like oh it it's must have happened right. today. Like, yeah, and they already filmed it. They already. <laughs> but all it. the comments are like, we got to get the writers back in there, man. Yeah. This is awful, and it's like this was written. By this was writers. this was written, <laughs> but it I mean pr- and it was probably shot beforehand too. But if they were shooting it. If it was written beforehand, but they were shooting it after, they probably couldn't make changes in the moment. Sure. So let's talk sure. about the, the consequence of this writer's strike yes. because, again, there's there's a delay. There's a lot of so stuff that was already made. people don't feel it right yeah. now. Yes. People are not feeling it yet. Yeah. But, for example, I saw Deadpool started uh, filming yesterday. Yeah. And the, the, the thought is you can't change anything in the script. Right. Not a word, not an um- because that constitutes writing. Right. Now, obviously- Direct, Directors and actors have a little bit of leeway, but very small. How small? Um, you, can, you can adjust a line if you're in a director, like a, or if you're an actor, you could be like, what if I said it this way? You're allowed to do that. It's, it's a very narrow area. However, the crazy thing is if you're a writer-actor or writer-director, you can't because of the strike. So let's say you're an actor who wrote the movie. You could not, you could perform, you could act, but you would not be allowed to go, I want to change this line. You couldn't, could you improvise? What if the scene was called for improv? It, it's a very gray area. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not like there's hunter killer robots watching. So it's not like someone's going to be like, you fucking Well, that's why the that. strike hasn't won yet. We but, need right. some but hunter you, killer robots. Right. Don't you feel like, uh, don't, I feel like there should be a responsibility right now of people doing that in those positions to be like, we can't, we're, we can't film this now. We well, stop. We have to, that's what the Duffer brothers know, did. I'm trying to get Hugh on the show. Like, so could you shut the fuck <laughs> up? <laughs> you, wait, no, who, who, oh, Hugh Jackman's in Deadpool. Oh, They're both oh, in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they should yeah, not be course. doing this. I agree. They shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. But in their mind, they're like, they're like, Hugh's not free until 2028. Yeah, yeah, are, yeah. You, are you crazy? And they're not scabbing. They're not scabbing. You know, like they didn't write the movie. Um, I'm well. Ryan Reynolds probably helped write it, but as long as, but as long as he's just acting, he is within his rights, and he is not scabbing. He's going to be improvising, though. We all know this. We all know there's going to be a little bit of writing done on there's, the day there, of. There's definitely going to be a little writing done on the day of, but there's sort of, you know, you, you you want to approach it almost like COVID. Approach it practically. If you're, like, freaking out at everyone not doing everything perfect, you're but, never going to win. But the strike right. gets excited when people stop production. Yes, like the Duffer Brothers did. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it, it's much I mean, harder. Yeah. And for them, I'm so curious. So the Duffer Brothers, who wrote Stranger Things, yeah. Yeah. I'm just so curious if Netflix says, whether, whether they just go, we're not doing it or the Netflix says has lawyers calling you have to fucking do it like it takes a lot of strength yeah. I imagine it to does. do what they did it does take a lot of strength the, the nice thing is I'm sure Netflix is cajoling them I don't think they're threatening them because they're so big but I'm sure they're cajoling them or being like well can't you do this or like what if we had someone do that like I'm sure they're trying yeah. to uh, you know find some work around that the Duff, Duff, Duffer Brothers to their credit aren't letting happen but that's because they are a big name they're the biggest name they're the biggest English language show on Netflix And so they're much more able to be like, we're not going to do this. Now, it's harder if, like, let's say you're, you know, in your early 30s, you sold your first show. Nobody's watching it. It's a lot harder to be like, I'm not going to do this. They, you know, shows will get canceled. Um, People will lose things that they worked on for years because of this. And that is something that we are aware of. 
There's mo- there's momentum. Not that I had anything in in the camp, but my 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 girlfriend represents a lot of writers, and there's just so much. Uh, it takes two years to build the momentum, and this person's on yeah. board, and this person's on board, and then if the momentum's gone, yeah, the emails just don't get responded to. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's brutal. It's a, it really hurts a lot of people, right? Um, but you can't have a collective labor action without like the point of it is of course to show that we are not to, the point isn't to hurt people, but to show that we contribute things and prevent the hurt of people. Yeah. But is it hard in, in a competitive industry Yes, to, to keep, I mean, I, I sometimes I'm, my mind is uh, not poisoned, but I'm very tunnel vision by my Twitter is very leftist. Sure. You know, in my mind, Bernie was going to win the last two elections, I think. But it's like in a competitive industry, I do feel like it sometimes must be tough to tell people who have not been working for years yeah. and who did not get the late night and did not yeah. have the impressive career that you had to be like, and don't work now as well. Right. And they're like, fucking A, dude. Yeah. Like, I don't feel yeah. a lot of solidarity with with SAG. Right, sure. And and this is not me going like, oh, I would scab immediately. But in my mind, the I haven't had health insurance for years because I have to make a certain amount of money. Yep, yep. I, I used to work so much in commercials and then it stopped. And I, again, these could be my shortcomings. This could be a lack of talent, lack of opportunity, yeah. lack of, of, of representation, any number of things. Right. But in my mind, I'm like, this is someone I pay money. I don't get health insurance and I haven't worked in years. Yeah. My, my feelings of love are not, and, and yeah, the yeah. Netflix deal, yeah. which I know is not their fault. They were fucked, whatever. But it's tough. Do you feel like writers? Do you you have the or, or do you have solidarity? I think. I mean, from what I've seen, yes. And it might be confirmation bias because you know mostly I've seen people at like picket lines, but those picket lines are often very big. Um, I think you do. I mean, I think one of the problems is things like mini rooms and shorter seasons means there's just fewer people in every room. So mm-hmm. even if you're not working, part of what you're fighting get against. Isn't and I when I say system, I don't mean that in the grandiose way of the system out to get you, but literally you're fighting against a system that is now being set up to hire fewer writers for projects. And so part of the reason you might not be working is because we were gonna hire eight. We could only hire four, so we hired the most experienced four. And you know, the mid-level and low-level people, you know, we only had four slots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um so that is, I think, part of it is is that because rooms themselves are actually contracting in size, a lot of writers who haven't worked in a little while are like, maybe that's the reason I'm not working. It has nothing sure. to do with, you know. Sure. Um, and I do think like, you know, just by logic that a lot of people aren't getting jobs because there are fewer slots, even though there's so many more shows. How are the strikes feeling? I mean, what's the mood like? Is it is it like, tell me about striking. Yeah. I, I've only done, you know, I did some marches in, in yeah. 2020. It was a very, very different thing, I imagine. Right. Um, it, you know, I mean, it, it never, I don't want to be out in the sun for four hours. So on a physical le- level, it, it is tiring at a certain point, but it's kind of nice to see so many people supporting it. It's nice like when- I, I imagine a lot of people wearing all black. Yes. A lot of, yeah. A lot of pale. A lot of pale, paleness. a lot of pale, <laughs> all black. Um, but there's like, you know, college students who have like donuts and water and there's, you know, you do see SAG people with SAG signs and SAG shirts that are like marching in solidarity, um, which I think will go the other direction too. If SAG strikes with, you'll see WJ writers mm-hmm. showing up at SAG uh, picket lines. Um, it's, when I say the mood's been positive, I don't mean it's been a party. It hasn't been like, ah, we're all having a barbecue. We're all writers. I did see uh, like dating on That's the, LA. the picket line. That's fucking LA. Los Angeles is, <laughs> is a different world. <laughs> really? Los- there's a lot of writers in Los yeah. Angeles. There's, there's a lot more writers in Los Angeles and there's a lot more Ozempic in Los Angeles. Oh, and so uh-huh. people are much more like, like you see these beautiful people who are writers and you're like, how dare you? Like, how dare yeah. you be an attractive writer? Um, and then like in New York, we're more like, ah, pay up. Like, you know, yeah, we're yeah. all like, well, we they, all- They're mistaking you for the inflatable rat. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> if, if, if you write for SVU or a late night show, you've seen some shit. So <laughs> it's like a little different. They use the SVU writers for corpses on occasional episodes. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I, I remember because uh, we had a moment where, you know, like I was talking to an SVU writer and it, 
you know, and she was like, oh, I love late night. I took late night classes. What's it like working for late night shows? And I was like, oh, you know, it's okay. It's like really busy, but sometimes it just like, you know, kind of, kind of feels like it's a lot of work, but it's okay. Um, and I was like, what's it like working for SVU? And literally the same answer where it's like, ah, it's a lot of work. You know, sometimes it's not great. Sometimes it's great, but it's okay. I'm glad I have it. Like, yeah. it's so funny to talk to someone who's in a different sector of the same industry and be like, I, oh, I love what you do. That's so cool. And they're like, I wanted to do what you do. Yeah. 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 If you were to guess. Yeah. How long, what, what do you think is going to happen? What, like, what, what are you feeling? You think things will be back in a couple months? You think the SAG will really move the needle? I think, I think if SAG struck, that would really move the needle. If the D, I think SAG is more likely than the DGA to strike. And this is all my personal opinion. I want to be clear. I don't speak for the guild, yada, yada, yada. Um, I think SAG is more likely than the DGA. If all three struck, it would, it genuinely, I believe, would change the game. We could get the fucking moon because that would shut down everything. Reality shows, game shows, Shark Tank, mm -hmm. like anything, almost, almost everything would be shut down. Um, and that would really move the needle. I think both SAG and WGA doing it would move the needle. And if WGA does it alone, it'll be harder, but it'll still help. Um, so I don't know how it's going to end. My guess would be my, my sort of like middle of the road gut guess is we're going to end around late August or September. Really? Yeah. That'd be nice. That, that, that is my like middle of the road guess. I don't think it's going to be very soon. I hope it doesn't go past the holidays. Um, but I think, you know, they're, they're losing money too on the other side. It's not yeah. just that like our, we've stopped getting paychecks on our side. You know, every day that they can't shoot, you know, every day that Daredevil has to shut down for a reason or that they have to spend two days shooting a scene because they needed a fix and there was no writer around. That's costing them money after money after money. Like we've, you know, picketed. And to be fair, a lot of the labor unions won't cross a picket line. Now, if there's no picket line, they will cross, like their unions are like, if you do not want to cross a picket line, you do not have to. Can you help me understand when you say a picket line, we're talking literally yes. members striking. And and just by, be do they have to walk back and yes. forth? Yeah. It's, it's all like an honor handshake type system. Uh -huh. And it could just be one person. It could literally be one person going back and forth. And if you're a truck driver, you might be, you're allowed to your Same. union without retribution to go, I am not going to cross a picket line. Wow. Just just to be really nitpicky here, if if there was a writer with no legs, can they do they have to still cross somehow? Or like I mean what you're if, saying they probably go, have a chair. But you're saying it's like there literally there has to be some kind of movement. This yes. is the agreement. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it sounds dumb. It really does what? sound dumb. No, it, I mean, it's a dumb thing. I'm just saying the, there's got to be some writers with yeah, no legs. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, but I think I they would have even more writers they with would, no legs because what are you going to do? They would have a wheelchair, though. Yeah. And, and a wheelchair. Sure, but, but, but even that wheelchair. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying uh, an 80 year old writer, one of Bill Maher's top guys, can barely move. He's still got to. <laughs> He's still got to go there. He's still got to go back. I, I bet you Bill Maher's old guys are not union guys. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do see your point, but but like. No, it, I'm just curious. It, like, yeah. Because I'm always interested. It's It seems so silly, but there has to be a physical person there. There has to be a physical yeah. person there. Um, and it is up to the discretion of the other labor union member. Like you could be a driver who wants to deliver what you're delivering. You could be, and when I say driver, I mean like people who have like all the lighting equipment in the truck or like a bunch of props in the truck. Cause th that's its own union of people who drive those things. And the, what, what, so a little, a 23 year old boy, he's supposed to bring coffee to the director. He's in what union would respect this? That's probably, I don't think there's an, there should be a union for assistance, but I don't think well, there give is. Give me a different job then. He, a uh, prop master. Yeah. So yeah. He, he goes, he's got the bloody knife. Yeah. And he sees you. Yeah. And you're walking back and forth. Yeah. And, and he doesn't have to cross. He's allowed. He's allowed to be like, sorry, there's no no knife on set today. I, I mean, he's, I, he's allowed, I, yeah. but I'm sure there's people with external, like yes. you know, in your work setting, there's probably pressures to do certain things. You know, I yeah, mean, you're allowed like to any other cover what one street. Um, I actually don't know the exact rules. Uh, you're allowed to cover more than one entrance, though. You're definitely allowed to cover more than one entrance. Usually buildings have something that's called, what is it like? A, it's, a, it's called a neutral entrance or a safe harbor entrance, and that's usually an entrance where it's like non-union staff. Like, let's say, like, the assistants, the people carrying the coffee yes. can come in. You know, um, and oftentimes, like, if we see, like, a kid carrying coffee, we're not like, scab! Yeah. You know, because <laughs> they're, not, they're not in a union, they're not breaking union rules, and even those people in, like, the unions that are deciding not to cross they're still allowed to cross because it's their job to um they're just allowed not to because of the strike yeah 
And uh-huh. so, you know, and like you said, like people have different things. Like you might really need those hours. You might really need those hours. So you really need to make that delivery. Or you might be like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I support these people. I'm going to sit in my truck and wait until they say they're going to be here four hours. I will be in my truck for four hours. And when that's done, I'll make my delivery. And that slows down the production for four hours, which means they're losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that helps us because it's like, look, the longer you keep us out here, the more money, not the drivers, but like the people at the top lose. The more on your spreadsheet, mm-hmm. it says that this show that you budgeted at 10 million is going to cost you 20. Yeah. What I like about that is, you know, it's, it can be very painful as an actor walking around New York City and, and you know, your agents say, oh, there's not a lot of jobs. Yeah. That's why you have been getting auditions. And then you see signs that say, you know, go to set this way. You see trailers. Yeah. You see yeah. people working. And if I had the power to be like, mm-mm. No work today. Yeah. I'm going to walk back and forth for the rest of the day to yeah. get back at I, And you know what? I would only do it for shows I auditioned for. Get cast in? Oh, if Marvelous Miss Maisel was still shooting right now, <laughs> I would dedicate my life. I would say, listen, you you used up 12 auditions of my life. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm picketing 12 hours a day. Yeah. yeah. No more Maisel. It's done. Yeah. yeah. I know. Oh, fuck. You'll never get that opportunity. That's a cool, it's a, it's a, it's a cool power. Yeah. Are you like, are you going to go somewhere after? Like, not, I mean, so she, shouldn't you not be doing this? Shouldn't you be fucking up Law and Order right now? Just he's walking been back and forth. Fucking up for three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah, I've, yeah, I've been going, going every going day. To, yeah, it's just very interesting the idea that you have to be there. Well, they give you else. a schedule too. Like they'll be like, "Hey, you know, we could use people in, you know, at a studio in Brooklyn at from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah. Or like, hey, they're shooting. Um, if you have a car, like they'll be like, if anyone has a car, they're shooting on location in New Jersey." Could anyone be out Ooh, there? And sometimes it's early, one. and they'll and they're not dicks about it. They're not like you have to be out there at five a.m. But they'll be like, "Hey, if anyone can be in Jersey at five a.m., it would really help us shut down this production." Um, last question before we move on to our last segments: uh, the Tony Awards. Yes. So, so at least this is my understanding. of The argument was the Tony Awards. I believe still is not going to air on TV because no, I think they, it, isn't it airing it's now? It's airing, oh, but it doesn't have it. writers. It doesn't have writers. So they can do old, they can do numbers of existing so they songs. Just say, originally the question, Tony Awards were saying, we're not going to air because we can't get a host. We can't get writers because yeah. people would be scabs. And then, and then a lot of people were like, guys, the Tony Awards is one of the biggest commercials for Broadway. Yes. It's this industry that uh, we for both Broadway. agree can collapse. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, yeah. but a lot of, but it's easy to say, and then you you meet people whose livelihood. Everything's complicated in the world yes. of capitalism. Well, those producers should fucking deal with it. Like, uh, it, oh, fuck those. It's so frustrating because then build a better business thing for yourself as yes. producers yes. that your whole livelihood won't collapse if one fucking TV show that no one watches. No one watches. No one, I mean, outside of some fucking musical theater nerds, no one's watching the goddamn Tonys, okay? It's not this huge thing. They care about who wins it. They care about who wins it. Yeah. So you yeah. can still announce the awards and get the people to go on the TV talk shows and talk about winning, but no one's, it's sure. not like, it's not like the Friends finale or something. No one's. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's uh, I, every year, it's like the worst Tony ratings ever. No one's watching. The it. only Tony Awards Russell ever watched was one hosted by Kevin Spacey. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so okay. So I guess they're going to do it without writers. Which, I think so. But but isn't there a degree of a writer does have to go? Then this song. Then this song. Uh, well, that's then, more like a uh, schedule. I would say that's more like a producer. So, but it's going to be, it's just going to open. No one's going to be, no one's going to even say, welcome to the Tony Awards. Cause that's I, writing. They got to, they got to wing it. They, uh, they got to wing better, it. And I better, they better wing it. And they got to wing it. They yeah. got like, someone could be like, welcome to the Tony Awards. But they like, and if they were like, this is down. really important. Like they, they can't, can't write it down. Right. They, they can't like they're put it in prompter. A, a teleprompter. Yeah. They yeah. better not be, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get there and monitor it because uh, the, I, I, I just feel like, I don't know how it's going to work. I'm curious. There. Because there, there, there was the thing I saw on Twitter where so, someone was like, guys, this is supported Broadway. And everyone was like, guys, strikes are supposed to be disruptive. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, there's that meme that, you know, don't make me tap on the sign. Yeah. Strikes are supposed yeah. to be disruptive. Yeah. Uh, well, equity is the worst one, too. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but they get nothing done. Oh, equity is awful. Awful. E- actors equity, man. Oof. Awful. Oof. I awful. mean, I, I have so many friends in actors equity. And I'm doing a show right now. Not a one loves them. They don't do anything. They don't do anything. Uh, how do you tell? Produ- people can get away with murder. In, in but how can equity. you tell? It's so hard from afar. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not in equity. But it's so hard sometimes to tell, is this a bad union or is the industry awful? Both. What is equity going to be involved? <laughs> Both. Both. But think about all the things that we did non-equity. What if equity was involved with 
Uncle Function shows at the pits. Shut It'd be crazy. It'd be chaos. <laughs> they can't monitor that. There's no money yeah. in it. Yeah. I just feel like live entertainment is hard. It's got to yeah. be really hard. Yes. You're overpaid for Titanic. Oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, do, is the, in your mind, are you like, if, if the Tony Awards didn't happen, would you be like, good, strikes are supposed to be disruptive. Every, everyone should be, f- it's I, hard. Yeah. You, you kind of want pain to be felt. And yes. part of a strike is deciding inside how much pain do people. Yes. Yeah. But I think also part of, you know, part of this strike too is like not recognizing where our limits are in a negative way, but almost being like, we can't stop them from putting it on, but hopefully they put it on and they realize it's awkward and weird and people go like, this wasn't very good. Yeah. yeah. You know, cause there's ways to show pain hopefully. of like, oh, yeah. you're going to go without us. All right. Well, it might not be great. Like there's ways to show yeah. pain. And I agree. Like we should shut things down as far as we can legally go. Unfortunately, legally, we can't necessarily shut everything down whole if you get the theater kids striking though those are powerful allies yes they can annoy people they've shut down yeah. denny's they can certainly well, shut there down was a broadway order. a broadway strike oh. in, uh, in the same time as the um writer's strike last and but it was only for three weeks but it was it happened because the theater in, kids in november yeah they were cartwheeling across no the they line. ended theirs quicker and i don't know what they got out of it i mean i don't see yeah it's clearly like not, not a lot yeah um, all right, let's go to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Do you have a this has got to stop? Could be writing, could be personal, whatever you want. Um, you guys go first, and, or, or do I do? Is it only me that uh, goes? Russell, it's generally one? only you, or, or no, I we, might have some. Let me look. You, you go. Yeah, look. Well, let me pull look up now. my thing. Look right at the beginning of yeah, the yeah, segment. Yeah, yeah, You go first. Um, okay. Uh, uh, I had to mail in my lease today. And I think it cost me at the UPS store eleven ninety five to no. send this contract, and they wanted a physical contract. Get the fuck out! I of hate here. this. Get the fuck yes. out of here! I hate that. And and listen, I, I feel bad for postal workers. Uh, this that they've chosen a dying industry, but it's it's insane to charge eleven ninety five for this document. A letter is a stamp, which is what yeah. 42, 48 yeah. cents, but a little bit more than a letter, eleven ninety five. Your industry deserves to collapse. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Postman. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, mine is, okay, so when you know you get a contract or something in a PDF, it should be just a little bit easier to somehow do that on your phone. Yeah. Like, we're at a time now where we're, we've getting enough things, technology's advanced enough, that I shouldn't have to go to my computer to be able to quickly sign a form on my thing. And I, I know I could probably do it somehow on my phone, but it feels like it's just a little too difficult. Yeah. And I want to be able to sign those forms on a fucking phone while I'm on the go. I'm signing multiple contracts. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, it's so a little busy. too difficult yeah. right now. Do you promise you're okay not being paid for this yeah. reading this week? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sign it, sign it, sign it. This Date. has got to stop. Yeah. This has got to stop. I would say, and this is a slight change, I would go, uh, I, I really want people to stop using the expression, it's the thought that counts when giving gifts, because they oh. usually say that after they give you something they put no thought into. Yeah. And usually when people say, it's the thought that counts, what they mean is, I remembered it was your birthday, and I bought yeah. you something. Isn't that what matters? Which, yes, it's very nice to do, but sometimes you'll be like, you don't know me at all. Why did you spend money on me? On s- I like. This is more of a thing about my family, but my family loves... <laughs> uses money as a, as a love language. Uh Uh Uh-huh. And we don't have a lot of money. So it's not like we're like a hyper wealthy family that does it. It's more like a bunch of broke idiots who are like, I thought you'd like a giant dinosaur, um, which is a real gift I got. But the problem with that is like, you didn't put a lot of thought into it. You sort of put a first level thought and not like a, would he like this? Would it go somewhere? And a lot of people are bad at giving gifts because they think that just giving a gift itself is good. And it usually is, but the thought that counts means you thought about it. You thought, do they have this? Do, do they have space for this? Is this something they would actually like or something I think is funny to get for them, which is a different thing. What's uh, this dinosaur? You got a big dinosaur? I got a uh, four foot tall pewter tyrannosaur statue. Oh my God. That I donated. I basically put in my building lobby and said, anyone who wants this may have this. Oh my God. Uh, do you get? Do they get you funny gifts? We just had it on Jeff Curie, and he said his family always got him funny T-shirts because they're like, "You're a comedian. Wear the funny T-shirt on stage." They don't get me funny T-shirts like they mean to be funny. They get me T-shirts like because none of their, none of my parents, my we have, I have two siblings. There's three kids in my family. None of us have our own children, so everything they get us are like things they would have got us when we're eight. Oh. So like, it's not like they're getting me a funny shirt. They'll get me like a shirt with like a Nintendo controller that goes, "I'm a gamer" on it. 
And I'm like, I can't, there's no world I'm going to wear that shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to visit my parents. Um, you have to explain to them, this is not cool even in gaming circles. Well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Of like, course. So I'm usually like, oh, thank you so much. This is so nice. Thank you. Or if it's a, with the T-Rex thing, I was like, I had to like sit down my dad and be like, hey, I really appreciate it. I know that you, you saw it and you thought I'd love it. But, you know, you have to keep in mind, I live in a one bedroom apartment in New York, so I don't really have a lot of space for things. And like, but I really, pre because I don't want to hurt his feelings. I, if he I, started crying, that'd be a great scene in a movie. Oh. Right. Please like, take it. Like, I haven't always had a great relationship with my parents, but I do know that, like, I don't want to hurt his feelings. I just want it to cross his mind that, like, just getting a gift itself alone does not mean that it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, he doesn't. Sometimes he doesn't have the money for it, and so sometimes I'm like, "You spent like a hundred or two hundred dollars on this. Why don't put it in a bank?" Yeah. yeah. So you know. Um, so you hear that, guys? Stop getting Mike Trucker gifts. <laughs> he doesn't appreciate them, and he gives them away to his building for free. No, I've received good gifts. Just uh, you know, put thought, put real thought put into real it. Thought put real thought, thought into it, into or it. don't do it, yeah. or don't do it. Our next final segment. <laughs> Your blessing. You better count your blessing. Russell, you got one? Yeah. Uh, my neighbors moved out, and I really liked them, but um, I feel they were at the apartment right across the hall from mine. Um, I feel a sense of freedom that no one's in that building, no one's in that that apartment right now. Yeah. I feel like pants are I'm coming off in the slamming shared doors. Hallway now. I'm 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 letting my dog off from the elevator to like I it, it's just a small small tiny thing. I had never had any issues with them. I loved them. They were wonderful people. But having no one in that apartment across the hall from me right now feels very free, and it's I'm just loving it. How long know? is this gonna last? Though? I don't know. They've been they've been showing it to people. Um, you're you're playing porn full volume. Yeah. You're you know me. <laughs> On my 80 screen TV, I'm just full. All my Sonos speakers blasted it. <laughs> Windows open. Yeah, for that's all, the way you do it. All of Inwood to here. Yeah, that's me. Um, uh, that, that's good. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah. Uh, you think quick? They'll fill it up quick? I'm sure. I'm sure by. It's a, it's I'm nice sure building. by. Well, I, it's going to be June 1st, so we'll see June 1st. Okay. Can you imagine? You come home one day. I open the door. I say, Russell. <laughs> If it was the podcast studio, I'd be like, hello, I would be excited. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I it's not making this commute down to the lower east. Just side. you know, no fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh my blessing. This is a good one. Okay. I uh went to my brother's graduation. My mom and stepdad, his parents, uh got divorced when I was like nineteen. Mm -hmm. And uh not the most fun divorce. Mm -hmm. If you've been listening to podcasts for a while, but they got back together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. That would be so fucking funny. Uh. No, but, but after, <laughs> after the graduation, uh, they, they gave each other a hug. Oh, okay, oh that's nice. Okay. There you go. That's yeah. Nice. And, uh, you know, I was like more, more, keep going, keep going, yeah, yeah, yeah. keep hugging. Yeah. <laughs> let's give him privacy guys. Let's give him privacy. <laughs> Hug it out. It's including his current wife. I said, oh. okay, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> uh, but I mean, truly, I don't think they've had much, much contact at all. Uh huh. And to see them hug. That's nice. And finally, you know, sometimes you see moments with, with adults. They never would have spoken together and to each other again if they didn't have kids. But it's in this moment they 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 can just just enjoy it. Yeah, just go fuck. Yeah. We we get to stop paying for college. Yeah, and yeah. let's at least celebrate that. Yeah, I think that's, that's nice. Good. Do you have a blessing? Uh, I mean, mine might be obvious, but it's going to be uh, Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom on the Nintendo Ooh. Switch. Uh, it came out right as the strike started, nice. so it's nice that like after being on a picket line for like three or four hours or like you know, working on a project for, for the WJ in some way where I'm like helping in some form or, um, to like just play a game that feels like magic and just walking around. And it also doesn't have like a, a heavy story. So I don't feel like I'm watching someone else's writing while I'm not writing. If that, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like, it's not like the last of us where there's a ton of acting and a ton of scenes and a ton of story. So it's kind of nice to just feel like I'm in this magical world that exists sort of outside of the troubles I'm in right now. 
yeah. in terms of, you know, like not making any money or being frustrated with the the industry. It's yeah. just a nice little release. And it's so it's so nicely made and it's so gentle and it's so fun. And you always like you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you stumble across something magical. So that is really a blessing right now. Sounds fun. That's nice. I'll never yeah. play it, but it sounds really <laughs> it's really good. It sounds really special. It's very and it good. Sounds like it would destroy my life. Um, uh, real quick, this is for the patrons. We're gonna have the patrons flash across the screen while right. Russell reads us. Do you know any street jokes? Um, not off the top of my head. All right, if one right. comes to your head, do over Russell read. Yeah. I don't even know. Just read this okay. one. We'll see. And patrons, Ita- thank you. If you want to join the Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/downside. An Italian guy goes up to his neighbor and says. Hey, Tony, you like a woman with a big sloppy tits that dro- down this afar? <laughs> Tony says, no. Is that, a, can I, can I be Italian? He says, Tony says, no. He says, you're like a woman with a big, huge ass. <laughs> what? You like a woman with a big, In huge ass, like a dumper truck? Tony says, no. He says, <laughs> you like a woman with a big, thicker mustache and she smells like a garlic all the time? Tony says, no. He says, then why are you fucking my wife? <laughs> <laughs> then why oh, are you fucking my wife? I love you reading these. This is fantastic. That, that was acting. That was acting. <laughs> Once again, this is from Jackie Bartling's book, Jackie Jokes, a collection of uh, street jokes. And I uh, enjoy street jokes very much. Mike, this is coming out. Thank you. Tuesday. Sweet. Where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Mike Drucker. Uh, I'm also on uh, Instagram as at Mike Drucker is dead. And uh, we'll see how long it lasts. Blue Sky as Mike Drucker. So you can just search for me if that happens to last longer than when this comes out. I got to tell you, I got Blue Sky and, and I went on and I said, I can't. No, I know. I, I know. Can't, I can't. I can't have another. I, I can't write a really good tweet a really good whatever. Yeah. And get three likes. Yeah, I it's, can't it's, do it. it's hard to go back to it, but also I feel like I, I mi- I've missed the boat on so many social media platforms that I need to stop being like, we'll, we'll have to see if everyone else is good at this before I try it. I know. I know. Fuck me. Um, Russell. Uh, follow me on Instagram at, at Russell J. Daniels and come see Titanic, the musical um, at the Dale Roth Theater. Excellent. Guys, I am headlining Helium, Indianapolis, June nice. 2nd and 3rd. Help me sell these out. I, uh, I've said on the podcast before, I was thrown out of a Starbucks in Indianapolis before, so please make me feel more welcome this time. And then after that, I will be in Plano, Texas, June 8th through the 11th. And otherwise, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. Uh, send me your theater shirts. I would love to wear it on the podcast. Yes. Um, and come to our live, our live taping Yes. With Molly Carney, 7.30 p.m. in New York City, June 5th. And, at Sesh Comedy uh, Club. At Sesh Comedy Club. It's going to be great. And last thing, if you have any of this has got to stop, send it to us, yeah. the downside WGS at gmail.com. We will read them on the show or on the Patreon. Once we hit 150 patrons, we're doing one bonus, or we're doing uh, the New York Times questions mm-hmm. to fall in love we're very to. very close. So a lot of good things. And um, support the strike. Uh, support workers. Yeah. And if you're not worried about AI, let me tell you right now, this entire episode was actually created by ChatGPT. This is The Downside. One, two, three. Downside. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi.